it is all about the characters. Genre is just the setting they live in. Sci-fi is just like any other genre. Comedy and drama are exactly the same. Like we don't, there aren't comedy people and drama people in real life. They're people who find themselves in a hysterical situation or a tragic one, and they and they'll have both in their lives. And it's the same person. So the characters are very important. But you can't really sit down and go like, I want to create a show that's about this guy Phil that I thought of. Like, no, you, you really do start with the concept. Um, but I'm interested in actually applying this to our actors and ask about like, do you think about genre when you're thinking about your character, or do you just think about the character? Well, I think yeah, for me, at least in my process, it always comes from your objective and your motivation, and, and backstory is again a big part of my process. And so I think it necessarily that that drives you through whichever genre it is. Because even though a lot of people think, you know, oh, you're gonna be funny in comedy, I, I had an acting teacher that always said, great comedy comes from great pain. That's you know, I think that's what people like um, Jerry Lewis and those, you know, a lot of that came from. Um, and I just think if you have a really strong process then that will fit whichever genre you're in. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah I mean, that's, that, that's right, absolutely. I mean, you don't think about, you know, I mean, you, you obviously, th th there's an old saw which is faster, louder, funnier in comedy, and it works, it does, it always does, but that, that in the playing of it, but that said, you know, really playing it for what's what's in front of you um, is, is kind of always, you know, what works best, and, and then allowing kind of the other elements in the story, whether it's a genre or a, you know, or a slasher or whatever it is, kind of show that, that you let, let those things do their work. But from the acting department, anyway, it generally is, I don't think you think about genre per se. Um, I think you think about kind of play of line shows. Yeah. 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 And then you said acting department and writing department now, which is such a great image for me that like we work in the same agency and there's, there's a room that's in the acting department and this is the writing department. The writers are all the really way on typewriters, the actors are all like going, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I need more! Uh, hi, this is of course for Keegan. I was just wondering, how long does it take to get on the Blue Fairy outfit? <laughs> and um, if you actually have to do wire work or something? I'm glad you didn't ask how long it takes to come off. <laughs> And uh, if you actually have to do wire work, or since they insert you later, provide the reason you just get away from going back and forth like so. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, uh, the Blue Fairy is always, uh, always, always, always up hanging 40 feet in the air. Um, <laughs> from, so, uh, and to put the costume on, we have kind of refined the process. It's you know, Once we got this stunt harness kind of down pat, and I'm, we're all just sort of much more familiar with it all, it started off, it, it took a good hour to get all of the things tied and the things in and hooked in, um, and now we're sort of down to about 20 minutes, half an hour, which is a substantial improvement. And uh, yeah, the Blue Fairy's kind of just by the nature of what she is, and the, the, the fact that they have to insert her into all the other things. I, generally, I'm out there, and there's a piece of tape somewhere, and you know, a water bottle over here, and once in a while I get a person which is just a wonderful thing. <laughs> Um, a glorious, glorious thing, and um, uh, yeah, that's just sort of basically the way it is. So, and yes, it's all wire work, which has taken some some skill to you know some time to get used to that. But now I feel really confident in it, and I can I know how to move my body that can make her go in whichever ways they need. Uh, I have to say that the one do you guys remember the whole fairies attack thing? Yeah. That was the only one that really kind of gave me pause because they, they put me as high up as you can go. Like usually I'm you know, maybe 30 or 40 feet, that's fine. And this one it was like up in the ceiling and they put me in a different kind of rig that was uh, up, you know, that you could go sort of from 360 if you really want to. And they were like, okay, just point your head downward and go. And, and I, I was like, okay, so we sort of practiced low down and I was practicing the points on that to be able to keep balance. Although I thought it would make it on the DVD and it never did at one point, it was just like, <laughs> ten rolls and legs. <laughs> Um, so then they, you know, when we practiced, I was like, okay, I think I'm ready. And then they went, put me up to the top, and I was like, okay. And then there was a moment, because to just throw yourself headfirst from such a height. That's like throwing yourself from a five story building. It's just a little bit terrifying. Um, and the good news is that we have a really amazing stunt and rigging team that, you know, they don't really get a lot of credit for what they do. But I literally, I put my life in their hands when I go on set, and they are really a great team, and I trust them implicitly. I feel a little clumped when I say that. Because honestly, like I've got little kids at home and I need to know that the people that hook my picks in did it properly. And uh, yeah, so by the time I get up there and, and then eventually it took it took a little practice run, but you know, now I feel really confidently up there and it's uh, you know another thing I can put on my resume. <laughs>
HusbandsTheSeries.com. Oh, yes. <laughs> you, you also should check out HusbandsTheSeries.com. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. We all love season two. And um, we have all our favorite moments. I just wondered what was your favorite moment of season two. Oh, gosh. Season two open was such a delicious benefit. The opener of all the, like, where it was all changing. And, oh, they're so good. But... There's so much. Yeah, it's really hard to pick. It's sort of a Sophie's Choice as well. It's like, you know, I know, like, I mean, there, there were, there, there's, there's so many wonderful things. And then, of course, I say one thing, and then, well, what about that? <laughs> I really love that stuff with, um, with Rose McGowan and uh, with young Cora and Grumble. I thought it was like, wow. Yeah, the, the spinning wheel scene, I was really, really proud of that. That's <laughs> yeah. that turned out really well. You know how you don't like to quote from something else? Like, oh, you know, it's just like that scene in Ghost. No, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't write a scene that's so clearly quoted from another thing, except that it was just too good. I don't know how to resist it. And I was always happy with that. That's good. Did you have a favorite thing to write? That, that was my favorite thing to write. <laughs> yeah, that's, that story, that scene in particular was really, really, that whole, that whole story, like the mom of when, when she says, I can spin a story into gold, and the dad says, Rip, makes a scene of it by saying, like, she says she can spin a story into gold, and like call, calls her on it in front of everybody. I thought that was really, like, one of those ones you didn't think a scene was going to go there, and like, goes there. I love that. Yeah, it was a good year. I think we all, there was lots of good stuff. Yeah, okay. I think that's it.